All right. Well, welcome to midweek service. I know some of y'all, this is your first time back to church building. How many of y'all are so glad to be back in the house of the Lord? Come on, make some noise. Amen. Woo! Praise God. I love what David said out of Psalms 122. I believe I was so glad to hear when we were coming back into the house of the Lord. Amen. Come on. He was glad. One translation says he was overjoyed. Praise God. And so we're so glad you guys are here with us. All right. And also those of you that are joining us on Facebook Live, thank you so much for being with us. We would love for you guys to like, comment, share, and host a watch party. That would be so awesome to be able to help us spread the kingdom of God everywhere. Amen. Praise God. Can we give our online viewers a big round of applause, family? Come on. Let's give them a big round of applause. Let them hear that we're so glad they're here with us. Amen. Listen, this is our second service back. Uh, I'm talking about a, a day, at least. Sunday, we had two services, 9 and 11, and then tonight at 7 o'clock. So, uh, you know, we really don't know what's going to be happening here in the near future as far as, um, as, far as the... Uh, the, the laws and things of that are concerned, CDC, governors, and all this other mess, but we're just so glad that we're here tonight to be able to get together, praise and worship our Heavenly Father, and then get together, get to see each other face to face, all right? Uh, but I do want to just kind of let you guys know that we will, we, we will be providing to the best of our ability a safe and uh, sanitized environment for each and every one of you to be in. As some of you are wearing masks in the house tonight. Um, thank you so much for doing that. Uh, that really shows that you guys are not only considering yourselves, of course, but you're considering others. All right. So that is so awesome. So let me just kind of go down this list right here. I need to read this out to, you, to each and every one of you. Uh, we are going to do our best to provide a safe and sanitized environment for everyone to enjoy service. Uh, uh, hands will be sanitized as you enter into the sanctuary. Some of you uh, took availed yourself to the uh, hand sanitizer right there. Masks will be available as well, but they're not required, but they are they will be available, so if you want to grab a mask or, uh, like now, we would have to get it because we're only having one exit out. But um, uh, please avail yourself to a mask. Please refrain from any physical contact, hugs, handshakes, fist bumps like I did earlier. <laughs> Praise God. I mean, high fives. Uh, and we're just asking that people just have air high fives. We'd be good for right now. And if you want to kind of make it a little bit more real, just uh, make a sound effect. <laughs> Right. All right. So <laughs> we can do that. All right. So um, every other row will be blocked off to promote social distancing. So we're doing that. Every other row is blocked off. And we just appreciate it. Everyone who, who is willing to cooperate with us. You guys are awesome for doing that. Uh, and we are asking if you experience any flu-like symptoms or low-grade fever, that you would please stay home and attend services through our Facebook Live Avenue. Um, it, it'll be uh, the anointing will go right through the screen just like as it is as we're sitting right here in service. Uh, we do have contactless temperature checks uh, taken there at the door as well so those are some of the few things that I have to kind of go over to let you guys know that's what's going to be available and expected here for probably about the next uh, few services all right guys so thank you all so much for doing that I know church is looking a little different and feeling a little different but you know what the presence of God never changes the presence of God is very tangible the moment you decide to uh, release your faith come on somebody say amen with me in the house tonight amen praise God all right but we are going to do our very best to accommodate and to provide a safe and sanitized environment for each and every one of you amen once again we're so glad you guys are with us tonight we're going to have a phenomenal time sister Yvonne is here to lead us in a time of praise and worship so if you can go ahead and please stand to your feet at this time praise God and let's go to the Lord in prayer father we thank you father tonight for such an incredible time. We thank you for your presence being in this house. We thank you for your love, your peace, God. We thank you, Father, that there's even health and healing already in this house. Miracle signs and wonders and breakthroughs are all over this place, Father. And we thank you for those who were willing to come in person tonight, Father. We believe that you're going to release an incredible touch of God into their lives. And even those who are watching through Facebook Live, we just ask that right there in their living room, in their bedrooms, wherever they may be, Father, that you would just touch their lives right there, Father. And we ask these things tonight in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus. And everybody in this house said... Amen and amen. Well, you know, at this time, I would be saying, y'all guys, get out of your seats and go greet somebody in the love of Jesus. But instead of that, go ahead and just look around and give somebody an air high five. Come on. Come on. Psh, make that sound effect. Come on. Psh. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and step into a time of praise and worship. 
Praise God. So glad you guys are with us, though. Praise God. Hey, listen, um, normally I'd go into some announcements and pick up an offering at this time, but what we're going to do is we're going to give you guys the opportunity to sow your seed at the end of the service. We'll have a bucket sitting right up here. I may have uh, one of my female ushers right here. Uh, grab the bucket and put it right here. And as you, you make your way out tonight, you have an offering with you, uh, just go ahead and drop it in the bucket right there. And uh, we're definitely going to be praying for it, uh, fruitfulness and multiplication. And we're going to believe, God, that it will cause you to not just be blessed, but to be a blessing. Come on, be confer prosperity to others, according to Genesis chapter 12. Praise God. So it'll be right there, sitting right there. So on your way out, remember, guys, we are not going to go out that way. We're going to go out the side door right here, out the dining hall door. Okay, guys? So please uh, don't go back out that way as you leave. Go out this way right there because we do we still got to follow some, some guidelines and things of that nature. All right? So thank you all so much for being here. How many of you all are glad to be in the house of the Lord? One more time. Come on. Amen. Come on, praise God. Nice. Well, I've got the word in here tonight. A very simple message. Some of us in here might be thinking, well, that's kind of simple. But for, for others in here, we might be going, hey, that is something that I needed to hear. And this is something, guys, that the Lord really has been uh, speaking to me about for quite some time. And um, I've been, um, I've been uh, pondering on it and thinking about it. And, you know, sometimes, guys, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I may hear the Lord, and it just sounds like something so simple. Like, I mean, you know, of course, everybody should know that, right? You ever, you ever thought that? Like, you know, you hear something, it's like, of course, everybody should know that. Um, but here's, here's the, the truth of it is, is that sometimes somebody may not know or may have forgotten and when you begin to start sharing that what i call or what we know as rhema word which means it's a it's a it's a it's a word that you hear god speaking to you and you share it with somebody else even though you may think it's very simple you don't know that that person may may need to hear that very word and encourage them and, and inspire them, maybe even bring them back to the place they needed to be. Come on, somebody. Amen. Even out there, out there in Facebook Live. So this is, um, I'm entitling this message, or I believe that God gave this to me, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go with it. It's entitled, Faith is Necessary. Right? Faith is Necessary. Now, I was going to call it, Faith in God is Necessary for Life. But that sounded too long. Amen. Praise God. So I just, I just, uh, I, I put it down to faith is necessary. Let's go to the Lord in prayer real quick before we get into this thing. Father, we thank you, Lord. We come before you. We humble ourselves to you, Lord. And we thank you for the word of God that's coming out of my spirit, God. I thank you that it comes directly from the heavenly headquarters of your spirit, Father, that will bring forth revelation, bring forth understanding and wisdom, God. It will empower people to continue in their walk with God. And we thank you, Father, that every word will be easily understood so that your people may be able to take it home with them, apply it, and live it out. And we ask these things in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen and amen. One more time. Let's give God a praise in the house. Come on, one more time. Hey, praise God. All right. Well, listen, um, so as I was, again, I'm telling you that God spoke this to me a while back. And um, it was like, of course, I mean, faith is necessary. Yes, it is. Of course, for me, I understand that. But God says, you know what? Not everybody operates in the same faith. Okay, watch this. Not everybody operates in Faith in God. See, the thing about God, he gave us all a measure of faith. Everybody. Even those who may not know God yet. You know what's so cool about that? God wasn't afraid to give people faith, thinking they may use it for something else. In other words, there is such a thing as godless faith. Right? That's why I was entitling it. I was going to entitle it Faith in God is necessary for life because there there is a natural faith there is a godless faith that operates out there in the world but that faith really is meant so that when that person comes to the knowledge of Jesus or hears about Jesus they have faith enough to be able to connect to God and get saved right 
Okay? So um, there is such a thing. But here's what I want to talk to you guys tonight is faith in God. And Jesus made a very interesting statement in the book of Mark, chapter 11, and verse 22. Let's go there. In the King James translation, it reads like this. It says, And, he, and Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith. Now, he could have stopped right there. But he didn't. Jesus had to specify where to put your faith. All right? Watch this. And Jesus answered and said unto them, have faith where? In God. And this was after, this was after Peter had just seen a fig tree uh, that Jesus had cursed prior. He had just seen a fig tree, fig tree who had dried up from the roots. And it was completely dead. And Peter was astonished by that and reminded Jesus, listen, there's that fig tree that you cursed yesterday. And so here Jesus is saying, listen, this is what he's answering back to them. Have faith. In God. Okay, have faith in God. And, 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 and listen, Matthew 4.4 4 tells us this, because our life is not just about eating. <laughs> Someone's like, oh, come on, man. <laughs> it's not. It's not just about eating. Watch, look what Matthew 4.4 4 says in the King James translation. It says, but he answered, again, he's answering back to the group of people, and he said, it is written, man shall not live. Someone say live. By bread alone. All right, so, so, so see that? Man shall not just live by eating. Smell up, man. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That means that we don't just live by eating, but we also live by hearing. Because what happens when a word proceeds out of the mouth of anybody? We hear it. Right? We hear a lot of griping and complaining, <laughs> but we should be hearing a lot of faith coming out of us because we have faith in what? God. Come on, somebody. Amen. All right. I'm just giving you a little pre, pre, pre whatever that word is, prenopsis. Is that how you say synops synopsis? All right. Pre, 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 pre. Anyways, so, uh, but, but, but I'm going to take you somewhere. But everywhere that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So watch this. So we don't just live. That, and that's what I'm saying. That's what I was going to call it. Faith in God is necessary for life. Because we have to have faith to be able to live. According to the scripture. We don't just live by eating. We also live by hearing something. Watch. Go with me to Romans 10, 17. King James translation. Romans 10, 17. So then, faith comes by hearing. <laughs> and hearing by the word of God. We just read that in Matthew 4, 4. That we shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That means something that we hear. Let me, let me just encourage you guys tonight. Listen, what are you hearing? Are all we doing is hearing the news? Uh, Sister Yvonne just told us earlier, she was watching the news this morning, and all she saw and all she heard was a bunch of scary things. Now watch this. In this world, that's what's going to be there. It's going to be scary. And can I just tell you, this is not good news, but this is what's going to happen. It's only going to get scarier. It is. It's only going to get darker out there. But it's going to be more light within us. Why? Because we're not just going to eat the media. We're not just going to eat what they're saying about certain things. We're also going to hear what Jesus said. <laughs> we're going to hear. We're going to have faith in God. And, you know, I, I love the fact. Go back to uh, Matthew 4.4. 4. I like these little three words right here. It says, it is written. That means it's already been said. Something's already been said by God. It's been written. And watch this. When, when God, if God said it, those words still have power till the eternity, till the end of the earth, and till the end of the world. Whoa, man, that's some good stuff. Well, I forgot. Well, here it is. He reminds you through Matthew 4.4. 4.4, Matthew 4.4. 4. 
This is how we're going to live, family. So this, this one I want to remind you. See, it's very simple. Have faith in God. Well, of course that. Well, faith is necessary. No, if faith is necessary for life, you can't let that slip. See, for the last three months, I can't tell you. I don't know. Have you been in faith? I don't know. Have I been in faith? I don't know. I'm going to trust God that you have been. Because there wasn't a day, there isn't a day that goes by, I can't, I have to live by, I have to do this. I have to hear the word of God somehow, some way. I have to see the word of God somehow, some way. I have to. I'm an, I'm an addict now. I'm fiending for that word. <laughs> yeah, I ain't trying to make fun of fiends, but I'm just saying, I have to. Just like I have to take a shower every day, just like I have to brush my teeth every day, just like I have to comb my hair every day. Don't laugh. Just like, <laughs> like I have to eat, come on, every day. I got to get into this word. I got to have my faith in God because it'll be very easy for me to have faith in the virus. That it's going to kill me or it's going to touch me or it's going to get to me. But when I put Psalms 91 into into work for me, now I have just put my faith in God that he said out of Psalms 91 that any pestilence that comes near me will not kill me. And that he will satisfy me with long life. Come on, praise God. And that no deadly thing shall come nigh me. And, I, and all that good stuff that Psalms 91 says. Why? Because now I've, I have heard something I'm not just going to eat something, but I'm going to hear something that allows me to have faith in God. Whew, praise God. Now, watch this. Yeah, it's going to get scary, Sister Yvonne. You're right. And it is. To hear all that stuff, all these increases of people that are getting it nowadays, I mean, it's, it's crazy. I mean, it's out of control. It's out of hand. The governor is even saying that now. He's like, this is out of control. We've got to stop it. He said we've got to corral it. That was the word he used. Corral is like corralling some horses or something. You know? But, uh, you know, but that's what the world does, to be honest with you. Watch this. Let me just pull some out. Six, uh, John 16, 33. Let's just go with, I'm just going to read this stuff to you so you guys can see this. Now, the, and, and, and let me remind you, is that this, this was spoken way back a long time ago before, before we are, not thousands, you know, of years back. And here is John uh, 16, 33. Jesus said, these things have I spoken unto you. What things? See, right before this, Jesus was speaking to them about the, hum, the coming of the Holy Spirit. He was talking to them about all these dark days that are about to show up. He was talking to them about all these things that the Holy Spirit is going to show you all this stuff. He says, but I have told you these things. These things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. Or that in me you, you don't lose your mind. Come on. That in me you don't get afraid. That in me you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't lose your faith. You'll have peace. Not a piece of cake, but a piece of God. It says, in the world you shall have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In other words, there's going to be some crazy things going on out there. That's just the way it is. That's what the world's going to do. He's, but he's saying, wait, hold on. But don't let that stop you because I have already overcome the world. And I have given you something that you're going to be able to overcome the world too. All right, y'all got to stick with me. Look what Psalms 34, 19 says. Psalms 34, 19 says this, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Oh, that's not good news. It says, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. So notice that. See, even though it's crazy out there, guys, even though it's a little scary out there, even though it's a little uncertain out there, God has already made a way for you and I to be able to be delivered from it. For you and I not to have to be touched by that. But see, if we allow all this news over and over and we keep hearing that, that's all we hear, then you're going to have faith for that. Your faith is going to be very strong in that the virus is going to come and hit you. Your faith is going to be very strong in that all the negativity is going to because that's what you're hearing. And faith comes by hearing. 
But we got to hear the word of God. Come on, praise God, because that's going to cause us to overcome. Just like Jesus said, I have overcome. Be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And when you put your faith in God, then you become the one that overcomes the world, too. And all this craziness that goes on out here. Are you with me tonight? Now watch this, Isaiah 54, 17, King James translation. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment shall be condemned. This is the heritage of the service of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Notice that in that scripture saying that there are weapons going to be formed against you. They are going to be formed against you. The world, the flesh, and the devil, they've got weapons that are going to be formed against you. They're going to try to take you out. And a lot of that, and a lot of that's going to come through the avenue of what you're hearing. If you don't have the faith to believe that God can take you out, then that's not going to please God. That's what Hebrews 11:6 6 says, right? So we, we, we have to understand that all these things that are going on out there, they're supposed to happen. But we have an agenda to overcome that stuff. How? Through faith. What Faith is necessary. It is necessary. Not just for the pastor. Because can you imagine if, if everybody just lost their faith in the church, who would I be pastoring? I, there'd be crickets up in here maybe. Some ants crawling because cockroaches or whatever. No, this is for all of us. We all have to have and understand that faith is absolutely necessary. I must do. And the only way faith comes, guys, is by hearing the word of God. The faith that we need, faith in God. That's the only way that faith will come. So if you have been sitting there, listen, anything that causes you to get afraid, anything that causes you to get Lonely, anything that causes you to worry, anything that causes you to stress out, to be concerned. What you need to do is hear something else. Watch this. Let me give you a great example. My daughter, Remy. By the way, my wife's not here tonight. She's not going to be here probably for the next couple of services. She wanted to be here tonight, but I told her to go ahead and stay home. But here's the deal. Every now and then, my daughter cries. Okay, she has different cries. Some are like this. They're like that. Some are like that. Some are like... And like kind of whiny, okay. Others are full blown, like, ah, ah. you know, that kind. You lose your breath, you know. I'm like, what's this? Because I don't understand, I said this Sunday, because I don't understand what she's telling me. I, I, I can hear what she's telling me. I, I, I don't know what she's telling me, though. It can kind of stress me out a little bit. Not that I'm stressed out about her. She's a blessing. But I'm stressed out because I can't understand what she's telling me. I don't know. Like, is, do you need a diaper change? Do you need a bottle? Do you need a binky? Do you need a swaddle? Do you need me to walk you up and down? Do you need me to bounce you up and down? Do, you need, do I need to burp you? Do you need to spit up? Do I, what? I don't know. So I try everything. I'm like, all right, mm, uh, you know, process of elimination. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> she spits up. Oh, that's what it is. But watch this. Even that, guys, I have to use my faith in God. I, and I said to Sunday, I said, Lord, what is she saying? <laughs> you know, what is she telling me? I don't know. And it's as if the moment I do that, I sense this peace inside me that almost I know. Like, I may not hear God telling me, but I feel this peace, and it's like I know what to do. So next thing, oh, you know what? You need a burp. And she spits up, and boo, she's good. Ah, cool, 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 cool. She's cool. But what's that? Even as something as simple as that, I still need faith in God. Why? Because that is absolutely necessary for life, and she's part of my life. It's the same thing with my wife. There are sometimes, I don't know if you know this, wives in here, but men and women sometimes do not communicate on the same wave patterns. I'm serious. Sometimes I'm like, what do you mean by that? And I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to take it offensive or anything, but if I, if I, if I, don't, if I don't correctly 
take in what she's telling me, I may feel like, wait a minute, that, but that ain't right, you know? And she's like, well, that's not what I meant. You, didn't, you misunderstood what I was saying. Well, I guess, I don't know. But then by the end of it, it's like, ah. And I could have gone into something way out there and ended up sleeping out in the doghouse at the end of the night. But I have already learned that while she's talking to me, and if I don't understand, I'm like, Lord, what's she saying? And then he gives me the peace. Boom. And one of the first, th- one of the things that God always tells me and reminds me, slow to speak, slow to anger. Watch this. Quick to listen. Listen to her and listen to me. Faith in God. Isn't that powerful stuff right there, guys? First John 5, 4. Watch this. New Living Translation. Every child of God. How many do we have? Children of God up in here right now. Come on, raise your hands. No, y'all not children? Okay, all right, watch this. For every, so say every. Todo, todos. Every child of God defeats this evil world. And we achieve this victory through our faith. Oh my God. Somebody ought to have thrown a hundred dollar bill pen throw an offering for that one. You don't have this translation back there, but I want to read it out of the CEV translation. Watch this. That's so good. It says, every child of God can defeat the world. And our faith is what gives us this victory. Watch this. No one can defeat the world without having faith in Jesus as the Son of God. No one, did you hear that? That no one can overcome all the crazy stuff that's going on out there? That no one can overcome all the crazy stressed out things that are going on in your life? All the thoughts that are all weird and crazy? You know, all these actions, people doing all, just weird things that are going on out there right now by the ungodly people or maybe even some godly people. But no one can overcome those things if you don't have faith in Jesus or faith in God but we do again maybe this is just a reminder to some of you we got to get back we got to get back into this word whether we have church or not whether you talk to me or or you don't you know with the three things the three areas that God has uses me in is the three areas of encouragement of motivating and of empowering people. I've always had it in my mind that if I can teach you guys how to, how to uh, apply the word of God, and not, it's not that I don't want to do this, but you won't need me to go pray for your family members. Why? Because you'll know how to do it. You won't have to wait till well, Pastor Bird gets back from vacation on Friday. We'll just wait till he gets back. For what? Why don't you just do it right there on the spot? Because I'm not the only one that's supposed to have faith in God. We all are supposed to have faith in God. Come on, somebody. That's how we're going to overcome the world. It's, and that's how we're going to receive victories through our faith. Come on, can somebody say amen to that? Amen. You know that uh, Peter walked on water. But he did fall. But then he got picked up again. You know what that, you know, you, you know what that lets us know? That in this world, we're, we're going to find some things that are, they, they might trip us up. But just understand this. God is always there to pick you right back up. Your faith in God is what's absolutely necessary for us to live this life out there. Absolutely necessary. There's another scripture that says the righteous fall seven times, but but they get up again. And let me just say this. God's not surprised by what's going on right now. It's not like, oh, my God, I didn't even think about the virus showing up in 2019, 2020. (laughs) That'd be weird, right, if he did that. He already knew. And he also already knew that he was going to have some faith people that were going to just believe him and trust him and have faith in him to get us through this. To overcome this world by our faith. 
That's why we shouldn't be afraid and we shouldn't be scared. Now, we're going to follow the guidelines because we're being wise. But inside of me, I'm not afraid. Neither should you be. We're not afraid. We're in faith. And if God, seriously, listen, if God tells me to go here and lay hands on Sister Paul, she may not like it, but if he tells me to do it, boom, I'm laying my hands on her because she's about to get healed. God's about to do something. I almost felt like calling everybody up to the altar. I was going to lay hands on her. I was like, ah, it's a little too soon yet. But anyways, I, didn't, I don't think God was telling me to do that. It was just me trying to do that. So I didn't follow through. There may come a time for that. But I want, you to, I want to encourage you with this last scripture, Jude, Jude 124, New Living Translation. It says this. Now all glory to God, what's this, who is able to keep you from falling away and will bring you with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault. My gosh, praise God. Did you guys get that tonight? Listen, faith is necessary. So how do we get faith? By hearing. By hearing what? By hearing what, Isidro? The word. The word of God. So however, however we got to do that, it's time for us to get back into that. Some of us in here will be like, well, I've, I've never skipped a beat, Pastor. I'm good. All right, praise God. But some of us in here, we might be like, you know what? I, I hadn't even read, I haven't heard the word since the last time I was in church. But you know what? There's one, I, I heard this the other day. I believe it was Jerry Savelle that said this. He said, the devil's very good at producing distractions in our lives. Like very good. He's, he's good at it. And he's also good at presenting a distraction in a form of a necessity. Like, well, I'm, I need to do this. I need, to, okay. Well, what's going to happen is when the, when the enemy puts these things that you feel like are a necessity, you begin to start making that necessary instead of faith. And watch this. Eventually, he's going to put something else right there, and you're going to fall for that. Eventually, he's going to put something else, and you're going to fall for that. Faith in God is being left behind. Boom. Watch this. And that's what's absolutely necessary for life. Because <laughs> the more and more we get involved with those things that seem to be necessary, the more we're going to get twirled up into that world out there and try to, keep, try to keep us from where we need to be at. Y'all with me tonight? Is that okay? Anybody get hurt during this message? Any animals get hurt? No. Anyways, that's what I want to bring to you guys. I just really, it's very simple. Faith is necessary. And I want that to stick into your heart. I want that to stick into your mind. I want that to stick into your spirit. It is necessary. So the next time you go into your bathroom and you go take a shower, bring yourself your phone, because most of y'all do, and put on a YouTube channel and click onto Family Faith Center Snyder and pull up one of my preaches and listen to it while you're taking a shower. Okay, it may not be me. Maybe Jensen Franklin or Joe Osteen or somebody. Why? Because that shower ought to remind you, whoa, wait a minute. Faith is necessary too. Just like I want to take a shower. Next time you brush your teeth, whoa, where my word at? Oh, next time, I'll tell you what. How about when you go home here in a minute and eat some supper? Next time you eat, ooh, it ought to remind you, man, I better get my word in t tonight. Once everybody goes to bed and all your kids, some of y'all are like, well, my kids don't go to bed early. <laughs> then go shut the door somewhere, let them go do whatever and go spend some time in the word because we're going to need this faith. I'm telling you, things are going to get crazier out there. They are. And if we get sucked into all that stuff that's going on out there, that's it, man, we're done. But we're not done. We're going to have faith in God, and we're going to get through all this. Come on, somebody. Amen? Stand on your feet. Praise the Lord. That's it. We're done tonight. Thank you all so much out there on Facebook world. Listen, uh, those that are watching by way of Facebook Live, if you have a, an offering to give tonight, you can do it by mailing it to P.O. Box 686. 
Snyder, Texas, 79550, or you can text to give, 325-400-2829. That's the text to give number right there, if you want to give that way. Those of you in here, if you have an offering tonight, we have the bucket right here. You guys, as you make your way out, please just drop your offering in the bucket. Again, we thank each and every one of you for your heart of generosity. It is because of you guys that this ministry is able to stay open and be able to go forth. You know, you know, just kind of saying that, unfortunately, there's some churches that had to close down during this time. A lot of the smaller churches that weren't able to make it. And so, man, that's, that's, not, that's not any fun. But just like some businesses didn't make it either. They had to close down, too, during this time. But I'm just thankful and grateful that we have some great people that have a heart of generosity that are still able to give their tithes and still able to give their offerings um, and just be faithful with that. Uh, I'm just thankful and grateful for each and every one of you. Okay, so just know that it, it, it's not the amount that matters. It's just being a part. That's where you come up with the word partner, being a part of it. That you're saying, this is my church. I'm going to make sure that this church stays open. My dollar is going to make a difference. My $5 is going to make a difference. My $100 is going to make a difference. My $500, my thousand, my millions is going to make a difference. Amen. Thank you all so much. All right, if you have that, let's pray. Let's close out. Father, we thank you, God, tonight for the word of God. We, we thank you that faith came. We heard about faith. We heard about Jesus. And tonight, Father, that your people were encouraged, motivated, inspired, and empowered to continue in their walk of faith. We thank God that whatever prayer requests are in this house that were, that were asked for, and even through Facebook Live, they may have a prayer request. Father, I just ask that you would fulfill and fill each and every prayer request, God. We thank you, Father, for those that were here tonight, Lord, that their faith were, was increased. And that they are no longer gonna, gonna walk in fear or destitute or uncertainty, but they're gonna walk this thing out by faith and overcome the world. Thank you, Father, that you reminded us this evening for us to have faith in God, and that faith in God is necessary for life. Thank you for this, Lord. We ask these things in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen and amen. God bless each and everybody for being here tonight. Thank you. all Hello, family. Thank you so much for your giving. Here are a couple ways that you can give. You can mail in your offering to P.O. Box 686, Snyder, Texas 79550. Or you can text your offering to 325-400-2829. These are a few secure and safe ways to give. We thank you so much and we treasure your offering and we call it blessed in Jesus' name.